All right, so in this video, we'll discuss how solar charge controllers work, both on a circuitry level and also which type of circuits are used within charge controllers and why. And then in an upcoming video, I'll be building my own solar charge controller for my final year project. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. So let's begin with the most basic question. What is a solar charge controller? It's fundamentally a voltage or a current controller. There's two main purposes behind a solar charge controller. The first is to charge the battery and the second is to keep the electric cells within the battery from overcharging. So the controller directs the voltage and the current from the solar panel, either to the battery or for example, to ground. So before we go any further, let's just quickly touch on solar panels because it's essential to understanding how solar charge controllers work. So solar panels have voltage ratings, for example, 12 volts. This rating is not the max voltage that the solar panel will generate. For example, a 12 volt solar panel would generate a lot more than that generally, for example, 16 to 20 volts even. So now let's say if you had a 12 volt battery, a car battery, and you wanted to charge it using a 12 volt solar panel, you have to be aware that that solar panel may start generating 16 or even 20 volts, because even though it's rated at 12 volts, then the panel itself could still, for example, on a very sunny day, produce 20, 21 volts. So it's important to understand that using a 12 volt solar panel, just on a 12 volt battery, may end up overcharging the battery and even possibly damaging it. Now, just like solar panels, batteries also have different voltages to their rated voltage. So they have, for example, a nominal voltage, which is the average voltage that a cell will output when it's charged. So the battery that we're using for this project is using a 3.7 volt LiPo battery. So the nominal voltage of that is 3.7 volts. In addition to nominal voltage, we also have fully charged voltage, this is the voltage that the battery will charge towards and the voltage at which point the battery will be considered full. So a 12 volt lead acid car battery, even though it's 12 volts nominal, will actually be fully charged at 13.7 volts and sometimes even up to 14.7 volts. And a 3.7 volt rated LiPo battery will be fully charged at 4.2 volts. Finally, we have discharged voltage. This is the voltage at which point the battery will be considered flat the 12 volt car battery is typically flat from 12 volts and under. So for example, an 11.8 volt car battery would be considered completely flat. And a 3.7 volt LiPo battery is considered flat from 2.7 volts and below. So you could say that the nominal voltage is around the halfway point between the voltage of the battery when it's fully charged and when it's fully discharged. All right, let's get into solar charge controllers now. So there's three different types of solar charge controllers. They are a simple one or two stage controlled charge controller, a PWM charge controller, and an MPPT, a maximum power point charge controller. So the first and most basic one there is the simple one or two stage controlled charge controller. The voltage is just simply controlled using shunt transistors. Don't worry if you don't know what those are, I've got an upcoming video on those, so that should be out shortly. I'd like to try and keep this video brief. So in brief, a shunt is a low ohm resistor that can be used to measure both current and voltage. The current from the circuit will flow entirely through the shunt and a voltage drop will then be generated, which can then be measured to determine the circuit current since the resistance values are known. A simple one or two stage controlled charge controller manages the voltage from the solar panel by shorting the panel to ground whenever a certain voltage is reached. So for example, 4.2 volts with a 3.7 volt LiPo battery. So if you had a 3.7 volt LiPo battery and you had a simple one stage controlled charge controller, then whenever that 4.2 volt is reached at the battery, the charge controller will then disconnect the battery from the circuit. This type of charge controller is super simple, super cheap and super reliable since there's hardly any components involved. Moving on to PWM charge controllers. If you don't know already, PWM stands for pulse width modulation. Again, in brief, PWM is just a method of reducing the average power that's delivered by an electrical signal by effectively chopping it up into discrete parts. So you basically change the duty cycle of a signal to either increase or decrease the power of the signal. So a PWM charger will do that with the input current from the solar panel. So when the battery voltage reaches a set point, the PWM algorithm will slowly begin reducing the charging current so that when the battery is full, the PWM controller will maintain a state of like trickle charge, meaning they supply a tiny amount of power constantly to keep the battery full indefinitely. And lastly, we've got MPPT charge controllers, which stands for maximum power point tracking. So these are the best types of charge controllers. 
they're able to precisely pinpoint the best voltage and amperage of the solar panel to charge the battery in the most efficient way possible. So these solar charge controllers can actually be upwards of 30% more efficient than PWM chargers. So the MPPT charger will look at the voltage from the panel and then adjust that voltage down to the best voltage possible so that it will then push the ideal amount of current to the battery. It's very advanced stuff. So that brings us to the three different stages of charging. So when a charge controller is actually charging a battery, generally speaking, it will have three stages. The first is the bulk mode. Second is the absorption stage. And the third is the float stage. So the bulk stage or the bulk mode, in this stage, the solar charge controller will actually provide a constant amount of current at any voltage it can. And then this will continue until the battery is around 80% charged. Then it will enter the absorption stage for the final 20% of the battery charging, the charge controller will vary the current and keep the voltage the same. Then the charge controller will slowly drop the current lower and lower as the battery becomes fully charged. Once it reaches between 95 and 99%, it will then enter the float stage, at which point the charge controller will supply a constant voltage and a current of less than 1% of the battery's capacity. So this will keep the battery fully charged indefinitely. So in my case, since I'm using a 3.7 volt LiPo battery, which has a capacity of 650 milliamp hours, then the float stage will actually be supplying a current of just 6.5 milliamps just to keep the battery topped off. So now for the juicy part, in terms of the features of a solar charge controller, there are basically five circuits that you're gonna find in the majority of charge controllers. The first being low voltage protection, second over voltage protection, third battery cutoff protection, fourth back current protection, and fifth discharge protection. As you can see, a lot of protection. So starting off with low voltage protection, the solar panel will start conducting once it's producing a minimum amount of voltage. So if our five volt solar panel is only generating one volt, then we don't want it to even try and enter the circuit. We're just gonna put a low voltage protection circuit there to make sure that we will have a minimum amount of voltage that comes into our circuit. Next up, we've got over voltage protection. The purpose of this circuit is to prevent the voltage from the solar panel from going too high. So like I said, if we've got a 12 volt circuit, we don't want 20, 25 volts coming in. So we're gonna add a circuit in order to protect our battery from being charged at 20, 25 volts if it's only 12 volts. Now for the most essential function of a charge controller, the battery cutoff circuit. We want our charge controller to stop pumping current into our battery once our battery is full. Pretty basic. So this circuit is to prevent the battery from getting damaged and possibly even exploding by stopping the current from entering the battery once our battery reaches a certain voltage. As I mentioned earlier, there's many ways you can do this. You can do a simple on and off switch, you can do a PWM signal, or you can use an MPPT algorithm. Let's move on to back current protection. So this is to stop the flow of current from the battery to the solar panel. This is particularly useful at night time, so the charge controller will be able to detect that there's not sufficient power coming from the solar panel, and then it will disconnect the battery from the rest of the circuit to prevent any backward current flow, which is when current will leave the battery and then go to the solar panel, which is obviously just a waste of energy. Now it is true that the potential loss from back current is actually usually quite minor, but the thing is, it's really easy to prevent it from happening. So it just makes sense to do it in order to improve efficiency. And finally, we've got the discharge protection circuit, which is there to prevent the battery from fully draining itself, which as you can imagine, it could happen such that you connected a load to the battery and then you just drained your 3.7 volt LiPo battery all the way down to 0.6 volts. So you want to make sure that your battery has some sort of protection to stop itself from draining too low. All right, so time for the real meat and bones of it all. I'm obviously going to build my own solar charge controller soon. And at this stage, there are many different considerations that I'm thinking about and lots of different ideas that I'd like to take a look at. So I just want to touch on some of the component considerations that I'm considering using for those five different types of circuits that I just mentioned. So starting with back current protection, I've seen someone use an N channel MOSFET in a forward bias condition to prevent backward current flow from the battery to the solar panel. Now, in case you don't know what a MOSFET is, they are very similar to BJTs in the sense that they are both transistors. The difference is that MOSFETs are controlled by the voltage at the drain, whilst BJTs are controlled by the current at their base. So with MOSFETs, the voltage across the drain will control how much current can flow. So a varying voltage across the drain 
will equal a varying current flowing through. BJTs are different to that in the sense that they're current driven transistors and the current flow is entirely dependent on the current at the base of the BJT. So I'm thinking I'd be able to use a MOSFET in order to prevent any backwards current coming from the battery. Now it is also true that I could just use like a simple mechanical switch, i.e. a relay, which would switch off at night time. So, and that would easily block reverse current as well. Okay, let's touch on low voltage implementations. So a Zener diode with the same voltage as the solar panel could be used to ensure that the circuit doesn't start conducting until the panel at the voltage has reached that threshold. So for example, with our 3.7 volt LiPo battery and our five volt solar panel, we could use either a 4.3 volt or 4.7 volt or five volt Zener diode. Then we would only get a reading from the solar panel once it had met that 4.3 volt to five volt threshold. Obviously we would get like a 0.7 volt drop across the diode. I'll do a video on that shortly and explain it in a bit more detail. Also in combination with the Zener diode, I've actually seen a MOSFET be used with it as well. So that when the Zener diode begins conducting, the MOSFET then turns on, which turns on the relay, which then starts the charge controller. Thirdly, we've got over voltage implementations. Likewise, the Zener diode, similar to the one that we use for the low voltage protection, could be used also for high voltage protection. So if you had a Zener diode with the rating of the voltage that you don't want, coming into your circuit and then use that in combination with a transistor to control a MOSFET and a relay. So for example, if we have my five volt solar panel, I could place a second 6.2 volt Zener diode in parallel with the first Zener diode, which was used for low voltage protection. So then this second 6.2 Zener diode could then turn on a transistor and turn off the same relay that was turned on initially by the 4.3 volt diode. This would now mean that the solar panel was generating a current only when the voltage of the panel was above 4.3 volts and below 6.2 volts, hence having both high voltage and low voltage protection at the same time. We've also got battery cutoff implementations. So I've seen a circuit where a MOSFET again was used before the battery to then detect when the battery voltage was full. So that when the battery was fully charged, then less current would flow through it and thus turn off the MOSFET. And finally, I've actually seen someone use an Arduino to read both the input and output current and voltages. So this would be really ideal for my project, considering I want to include an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi in the kit anyways, and I would love for the user to get the most amount of use out of that Arduino and Raspberry Pi as well. So if we can teach them how to use GPIO pins in order to take the voltage and current inputs and read them, that would be fantastic as well. And it will also involve quite a little bit of coding as well, which is great for a hobbyist or a student to learn if they're thinking about getting into electrical engineering. Cool, so I think that about wraps it up for this video. It's now time for me to start building the solar charger and I'm really excited. I think we'll start with trying to make just the basic one-step solar charge controller using shunts. So like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.